coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Living legends heavily criticized for pending award to Prince Harry. D-Day Tour plans out its journey through the old world. X-59 Quest unveiled for the first time. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Living legends heavily criticized for pending award to Prince Harry. The annual Living Legends of Aviation dinner takes place later this week, and at least one recent announcement is causing quite a fuss, namely that of pronouncing Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, as an aviation legend, strangely placing him amongst the likes of Armstrong, Hoover, Jaeger, Aldrin, and others. This has not gone down well with a number of aviation luminaries and has been further complicated by another award for Amazon boss Jeff Bezos' fiance, a helicopter pilot and aviation business owner who seems best known for her relationship with the Amazon founder and the world's third richest man. The annual Living Legends event has attracted a fair amount of criticism over the years, not for the number of justified legend awards given to several truly substantive folks who have moved aviation forward, but for the many other awards given to several well-to-do folks who have achieved a fair amount of fame while also having had something to do with aviation, while sometimes that involvement was, at best, minimal. Supposedly a fundraiser for empowering young people with the wonders of aviation, the annual event has served as something of a feel-good gathering for aviation's movers and shakers, especially for the Hollywood crowd that possess a pilot's license or some other aviation-related connection. And after the break, Aerodrone's exhibition returns to Friedrichshafen. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. Coming to Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in celebration, Trace Atkins for an opening day concert. A total war since I was a kid between Jesus and John. Don't miss Trace Atkins with special guest Sarah Evans. Ponytail girl grown up to be a woman, now she's gone and I'm blinking an eye. Get your tickets now and be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in. Go to flysnf.org. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Aerodrone's exhibition returns to Friedrichshafen. Friedrichshafen, Germany announced the return of a three-day trade fair devoted to uncrewed aircraft and their infrastructure named Aerodrones. The exhibition will run from April 17th to 19th, 2024, as the, quote, ideal platform for drone providers and operators to present their products and services to an expert audience, end quote. Aero Friedrichshafen says it has already been collecting registrations from the movers and shakers in the UAV market. Leading players in this up-and-coming aviation segment have reportedly already registered. French Air Force places order for 42 Rafale fighters. The French Defense Procurement Agency awarded Dassault Aviation an order for 42 Rafale combat aircraft for the French Air Force. The Rafale is described by Dassault as a technical, operational, and commercial success which continues to position France at a world-class level in combat aircraft. The Rafale has been designed to evolve by successive standards. Standard 4, focusing particularly on connectivity, is under development. Standard 5, which is currently preparing for launch, will bring new capabilities in collaborative combat. Sirius Aviation AG proposes hydrogen VTOL aircraft. 
Swiss aviation startup Sirius Aviation AG has proposed their new Sirius jet, which might become the world's first hydrogen-powered VTOL aircraft. The Sirius jet is described as a high-performance, zero-emission VTOL aircraft propelled by a hydrogen electric propulsion system. The company boasts of expectations that include extended flight distances, impressive speeds, and high altitudes at near silent levels. Aiming for 2025, the Sirius jet may take flight in two versions. Sirius Business Jet, tailored to private jet needs, and the Sirius Millennium Jet, crafted for commercial aviation. MDM-1 Fox and Fox P CAD from EASA The Margonski and Mizowski MDM-1 Fox and MDM-1 P Fox P sailplane has seen the issuance of an EASA airworthiness directive, warning that the aerobatic glider behaves differently and spins from how it presents in the approved flight manual. The EASA rationale reads, quote, Accidents of MDM-1 sailplanes have been reported where the sailplanes crash during aerobatic flights, end quote. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. D-Day Tour plans out its journey through the old world. Planning for the D-Day Squadron's 2024 Legacy Tour continues with an announcement that the Western Airlines DC-3 will be tagging along. The tour will see the squadron make the trek across the Atlantic Ocean with 10 more veteran aircraft. The whole bunch will head over to commemorate both the 80th anniversary of the Normandy landings and the 75th anniversary of the Berlin Airlift. With the addition of Tim Savage's Western Airlines bird, the total number of the D-Day squadron grows to 11 in all. Preparations for the trek continue, with the D-Day squadron team working to find North American operators ready to assist in training, logistics, and oceanic planning for the mid-May journey. Across the pond, members in the UK are also readying the field. D-Day Squadron's newsletter contributor Adam Simpkins headed out to North Weald, Essex to touch base with Aero Legends owner Keith Perkins and others to set the stage for the UK and Normandy legs of the tour. Currently, the schedule begins on May 31st, where crowds can watch the parachutists practice their drops, followed by two shows at North Weald and the Imperial War Museum Duxford on June 1st. And after these messages, X-59 Quest unveiled for the first time. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. X-59 Quest unveiled for the first time. No more CGI for the next-gen X-Plane from NASA and Lockheed Martin, now that the duo has finally debuted the quiet supersonic aircraft live in the metal. The X-59 Quest aircraft is a demonstrator to bear out the possibility of supersonic flight without the supersonic booms. If successful, the concept will revolutionize public air travel with a whole new niche of high-flying, fast-moving supersonic aircraft. The Concorde took a swing at the supersonic passenger craft idea, but it ultimately died a slow, expensive market death as its destinations limited its performance to reduce noise on the ground. That apparently ended supersonic passenger carriage for good, but new money, new ideas, and fresh materials lie ready and waiting to take another crack at the market. NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy was joined by brass from Lockheed and NASA at a ceremony revealing the Quest demonstrator at the former Skunk Works facility in Palmdale, California. The aircraft, if successful, won't necessarily be completely free of sonic booms, however. NASA wants to reduce the effect of the supersonic crack with sculpting, shaping, and materials placement that will slough off and delay the transition to supersonic along the body of the aircraft. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.